Hey everyone, Lucas from iExplore here. Tonight, Axel and I are exploring Ikebukuro, the west side of Ikebukuro Station. And we're gonna do some photography with tonight with my trusty Nikon D4. So, the reason I wanted to use this camera tonight is, as many of you who watch this channel know, I really love this camera. I've been using it for many years. I'm a fan of SLRs. But about two months ago, I got a Nikon Z62, which is actually currently in Axel's hands shooting this video. And I've been using it for two months straight without touching the D4. And this is actually the first time I'm breaking out the D4 since then. So this is kind of like a, like a reverse impression video. It's going to be my impression of using a classic style SLR after having used a mirrorless camera for two months. So we're going to explore the area, see what kind of shots we're going to get. But first, I just want to mention, those of you who have followed us on Patreon, supported us, we really, really appreciate that. And anyone who does will get access to our uh, Tokyo Photo Spot map. So be sure to check that out. And your support is really greatly appreciated. It helps us, you know, keep running this channel. Okay? So we're going to go explore Ikebukuro and see what we can shoot. And we're going to go that way eventually, but I want to shoot something right over here. Just for a quick brief moment. I'm going to pop in here. Because there's a view here that I happened to shoot a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago, on the Z6. So I'm going to get the same view with this camera and then it will have actually more like a direct image comparison this is not scientific guys mind you but you know i think it'd be a fun way to compare the cameras i explore now we do want to be discreet in this area we're not going to photograph people because you know this is these hotels around here they're not your regular run-of-the-mill kind of hotels what kind of hotels are these, Axel? <laughs> well, they are called love hotels in Japanese. Right. So what does that mean? I don't know what, I don't know what that means, Axel. You've got to explain it to me. <laughs> well, it means that you can pay to stay by the hour uh -huh. and some business is going down. Interesting. You know, I, never, I can't imagine what you would do for just an hour in a hotel, but you know, my innocent brain doesn't get it. Okay. Well, anyway, we're going to shoot the view here, okay? And I'm going to do this on... Um, Manual mode, which is the way I usually do, so M with auto ISO, so I'm on a 60th, I'm on f2.8. And by the way, I brought my zoom lens out, I actually have my, quick side note, I have my 40 millimeter, which I'm going to use later, but I'm going to start with the zoom lens, uh, the autofocus lens, because I want to kind of compare the autofocus between the Z6 and the D4, so my experience of it, because that's one of the big major differences between the cameras. Okay, so I'm going to get a shot of the view here. Okay. All right. Looking good. Right away, I mean, I'm, the difference in autofocus is complete. I mean, the, the focus point in the D4 is this little red square, while in the, the Z6 or most mirrorless, it's like a bigger thing, bigger, you know, focus point. And um, you can much more clearly see where the focus is moving. And I always use tracking focus. Those of you who have been watching the channel know that on the Z6, on the D4, I'm always using tracking focus. I like to track my subjects with the, uh, with the AF system. And I'm doing the same thing here. I actually focused on that spark sign, you know, straight with the focus point in the middle. And then I, while holding the focus button down, I panned over to the left so that the focus stayed over there. And then I did, I'm going to do the same again for a, a part of the scene over there where the actual hotel is. Okay. And there we go. And so it, it works the same way. It works great. But yeah, on the Z6, it is a little bit easier, a little bit more dependable, it feels like, but it still works awesome on this eight-year-old camera. Now, before we move on, another thing that I immediately noticed after having picked this up after two months is, yes, it's bigger, it's a bit heavier, but it's like kind of thicker and feels a little bit better in my hands. Now, don't get me wrong, the Z6 II is great. I'm enjoying using that one too from an ergonomic standpoint, but something very comfortable about this one, maybe just because I'm used to it. All right, anyway, we're going to move on. I think I got enough shots here. Maybe get one, one, one last one. Slightly different positioning without this vending machine and the, the spark sign, that sign that says spark. Okay, there we go. All right, and then we'll head out that way and we'll go deeper into Kibuko. I'm actually, from here on, I'll put my mask on because the other parts of this area are going to get much more crowded.
I love these buildings over here with like, it's very retro with like the pipes and stuff. Let's get a little bit closer and then try to shoot them from the side. So I can uh, zoom in a little bit with this lens. Yeah, right about here. So I'm still on a 60th manual. Yeah, and here, so this is where I'm starting to feel like, ooh, if I had the Z6, I would have done, would have done it a little bit differently because with 70 millimeter, which is about where I'm zoomed in, 50 somewhere, 50 something, 70, whatever, I don't really want to go below a 60th for the shutter speed with this camera, but with the Z6, I, I could confidently go lower. And that would be good to help, keep me the, help me keep the ISO down, which currently was 1600. So I probably could have gotten it down to 800 on the other camera. So that's something that like already I'm feeling like, ooh, yeah, I could, I could try to go lower. Let's try on the D4, let's go to the 30th and see if I can get a steady shot here. Okay, I took a whole bunch. I mean, they look pretty sharp, you know, so that's okay. We'll see later on the big screen. All right, keep going. This part of Ikebukuro is, you know, we already talked about the love hotels over there. And in this area, it's like bars and, you know, nightclubs and stuff like that. So it's, but it all feels a little bit retro and kind of dingy in a good way. Like, it just feels like kind of the 80s still here, you know, the, the bubble era. We get another shot of this building from the side here, which is pretty cool. It's a nice profile shot. I'm not going to do a 30th. I'm going to go back up to a 60th because... I'm just more steady, you know, more confident that way. That my hand is not steady enough. It looks pretty good. Nice exposure, everything's good. I'm on minus one compensation the whole time. The D4 generally, I use it that way. Z6 as well, I'm usually a little bit minus. So yeah, I'm gonna try to, I got like a profile shot. I'm gonna get one more in a vertical frame. Okay. I'm going to get one including these, this uh, ad and the pipes and stuff on the side here because it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's pretty good. Let's keep going. I'm going to head in this area. Um, one thing that also is noticeable right away is just kind of the crunchiness of the camera. Like the shutter is loud, the dials are very nice and clicky. They are in the Z6 as well, but certainly that's a very tactile to use camera. So. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I feel very at home with this thing in my hands, for sure. Maybe because I'm just used to it. Let's go farther. That's nice. I like the, the view here, the angle. Now, one thing that I know that pretty much at least from my experience so far feels on par with the Z6. Maybe in like scientific tests you would see a difference, but the quality of the image, the dynamic range, that kind of thing, awesome in this camera, awesome in that camera. So no complaints there. The resolution is a little smaller though, of course, than this. It's only 60 megapixels. So the maximum, you know, when you zoom in on the pixels, the, the maximum quality you're gonna see is, is diminished. But that doesn't really change how I use the camera in practice. So it's not a big difference for me. Nice, beautiful, nice lonely city scene, well lit. Okay, let's go across the street into this uh, parking lot over here. to shoot these pipes over here which I've definitely shot before on many occasions. Let's see what we can do with around 28. Nice wide shot. Yeah. 
I'm going to try to get, I love the pipes themselves, but I'm going to try to get them with maybe a person in the background there. Okay. That's pretty cool. Okay, and I could get another one with just the pipes themselves. Actually, yeah, let's go this way. No, I said we go that way, but the colors here really attract me. It's very pink and bright. Actually, this building from this angle looks cool too. I like how the people are just kind of scattered through the scene a little bit. Nice. Let's keep going. That was cool though. love the feel of this area. All the buildings are quite old and they have that retro feel that I keep talking about. But sometimes it's hard to capture that in the shot. So you can experience it when you're there, but it's hard to, you know, have that feeling come across in the photo. Let's go this way. Actually, let's get a shot of this tempura place here, Tendon. It's kind of cool. <laughs> 